Hi, I'm Roger, and this is the shortened version in how to build a four-chamber nursery bat house. Uh, there is a longer version of this that I've got on my channel, which will take you step by step through everything from cut layout and cutting and assembly and gluing and how it all goes together and what color to paint it and where to place it and what direction to place it and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, what this video is going to be is just little edits and excerpts of the original video to make it somewhat shorter for those of you that are more advanced. So from here on, let's get with the build. Did a lot of research and I will put links to everything in the description below. One of the things you can download is the Bat House Builder's Handbook. And I printed this out and put a comb binding on it so I could use it out here in the shop. It's got a lot of reference material in there too about where to paint your or where to place your bat house, what color to paint it depending on where you are in the country and yes it does make a big difference. At any rate, uh, one of the first things I need to do here is cut my materials down. Uh, the way these plans are drawn up, a half sheet of half inch plywood and a half sheet of 3 8 plywood will build two four chamber nursery bat houses and you will also need two lengths of one by six eight foot long. Uh, you can use cedar. I'm going to be using pine since it's going to be painted. Uh, when you're choosing your plywood, absolutely do not use tree plywood. That, that's no good at all. You need to have an exterior plywood. A uh, grade of CDX is fine, uh, but if you are going to use the CDX, try to find 5-ply instead of 3-ply. This goes for the 3 8 as well. If you can find 5-ply, it'll hold up much better, be less apt to warp. It'll be easier to glue and to fasten. Uh, the plywood that I chose for these, yeah, and I actually went out and bought some wood lumber for this. Usually I'm looking for scraps and free stuff, but I had to buy the wood for this one. I bought ACX plywood. Um, I mean, it's A grade on one side, it's clear, no knots, it's going to look nice on the, ins on the outside. Uh, the C grade on the uh, inside is a little rough, there's some knots, but the bats don't mind and it's 5-ply and it's exterior glue that's what the X stands for very important uh, I'm also going to be using glue on these and I'm using tight bond 3 which is a waterproof glue even though it'll be painted and I you don't have to glue this but I intend to and I'll be using uh, hardware will be uh, galvanized one of the things that the uh, bats need is a way to climb up into their nest or into their house and one way to do it is to cut a bunch of very small slots in the wood so they have something for their feet to grab onto to crawl up inside the brood box. Uh, yeah, I could do that. I'm certainly set up for it, but my, in my opinion, cutting all the little grooves is going to leave more surface area out there. It would also make it difficult to paint without filling the grooves up. Another option is to use this, uh, it's actually plastic gutter guard and you get a uh, 6 inch by 20 foot roll for 2 bucks and I'll be putting this material, I'll get this opened up here a little bit see what it looks like it's just a, a plastic mesh, it's ultraviolet stabilized um, I've used it on gutters before and it holds up for years and years and years I'll be putting this on with uh, galvanized upholstery staples uh, because I have an upholstery gun but you could use a regular staple gun as well so make sure you use either galvanized or stainless steel staples and you don't want anything to be too long because you don't want it coming out the other side of the wood so you want to keep them fairly short like a 5 16 uh, leg staple and uh, as I get into the build I'll be uh, showing you how I put this on okay I guess the next best thing to do here would be getting down to doing some cutting so be back. We've got most of the other parts cut. I'm a little bit out of camera view here, but I've got a big pile of parts here. Looks like I've been to Ikea. So some assembly required. Uh, we'll get back to this tomorrow and see you then. Yeah, this could be a little bit fun with this curling up on me. Well, helps if you close the bottom of the staple gun all the way. Put that in my blooper reel. 
Okay, a couple things I should add here. Um, when you're putting the mesh on your backboards, make sure you do a cutout for the uh, passageways. Don't cover them up or the bats won't be able to get through. Also on the backboard, this will be the part facing out, of course, and the lower part from about here down will be open. If you're going to be painting and using a brush or a roller, most people will, you should paint the backboard before you assemble this, at least the bottom portion of this. Um, I'm going to be spraying so I won't be clogging these holes up, but if you're using a uh, brush or a roller, you'll want to paint this lower part first. Okay, I'm going to get uh, the rest of my pieces lined up here and then we'll start doing some assembly. Um, oh, also on your staples, you can use a hammer tacker if you're accurate. Otherwise I would use a regular staple gun or electric or a pneumatic stapler like I use. Okay, I'll get all the pieces together here and we'll get set up. We'll put one of these together. Okay, I have this roughly assembled the way it's going to go. Everything is just sitting together here. Nothing's fastened. Just kind of wanted to show a little bit about how this lays out. Um, if you were to look at the plan, some people may be confused by the way it looks. Uh, this, of course, is your roof piece. This is the upper front cover. This is the lower front cover. <clears throat> now I'm going to lay the side down over here so you can kind of see how these pieces layer up. This is your vent opening, so you've got your two small spacer blocks here. That leaves your opening for your vent. Then you have a spacer for each one of these. At the top up here is your roof support that will go on the backboard. And you'll also have one on the front partition. There are little spaces as you can see here and there. I suppose when they designed it they wanted to make the best use of the wood. It's not going to be uh, a big deal as far as structure goes. I mean they're just little tiny spaces. This is how everything lines up you know in a, in a dry fit. I figured I'd lay this out so that uh, somebody that didn't quite understand the way the plans were drawn would be confused. So I'm gonna what I'm going to be doing is using glue and a combination of uh, galvanized staples, galvanized finishing nails, and galvanized brads. These could also be done with uh, deck screws. You could screw this all together. The glue is not necessary, but to me it seals things up better and I also find that a glue joint is going to be stronger than something put together with screws or uh, brads because the, especially with the Tight Bond 3, that glue joint is actually stronger than the wood is and if you were to actually break that apart, you would break the wood, you would not break the glue joint. Got a new battery in there, so we're good to go over there on that. Something I did off camera um, after I changed that battery was I laid my pieces on here and I saw that my two side pieces kind of bowed out a little bit. So I threw a couple clamps on there. It didn't take much to throw it in the square. So laid this on. Then I also noticed that up where the front cover goes on and the roof bevel came down, it would leave a little bit of a gap because they did, originally didn't call for a bevel there. I put a 25 degree bevel on the top of that and then while I was over there fooling around I decided to round over all my outside edges. Uh, it's a pretty good eighth inch round over. It's going to give a more of a finished look and also prevent uh, any kind of splinters or splintering or anything. So what I'll need to do next is put these on. There is a gap by design between the upper and lower front covers. About like so. It allows for a little ventilation. So I will get the glue on here and I'll, you know, I've switched now from staples to uh, inch and a quarter br galvanized brads. It'll give it more of a finished look and I can actually fill them little holes on the front if I want to. Okay, the next step will be the roof panel. I'll let the glue dry and everything and I'm all satisfied with that. Uh, I did take this over to the router table and uh, I rounded these edges over on the front and the sides on both top and bottom. It gives a little bit more of a finish look and there again I'll keep the room getting splinters. The bevel side I didn't do anything with. Uh, this fits pretty well. I've got a sp spacer board under here so I can make sure this is absolutely flat when I staple it on. Uh, this could be covered with either a shingle 
or uh, a granulated tar paper type roofing or it could be covered with EPDM roofing which is uh, commercial rubber roofing I have to have quite a bit of that I never, still haven't decided how I'm going to finish this up or it could be uh, covered with truck bed liner I've seen that done on birdhouses I don't see why you couldn't do it on uh, a bat house but all I need to do is uh, make some marks here to even my two sides out and put some glue on and staple that on well, thanks for watching this shortened version of uh, How to Build a Bat House. Uh, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, we're always looking for uh, comments, and we're also, also looking for subscribers. And if you want to be notified when the next video is posted, hit that bell, and you'll get a notification every time we post a video. Thanks for watching.